What's up guys and welcome back to the Doyu Cup. No matter what you heard on any other website, which may or may not have been correct, today we're going to have a best of three between EP and Newbie Miracle. This is going to be an elimination Radiant match, so bad. lose two games and you are out in this best of three. Should be a pretty high action. I do think EP are probably the favorites to win, but that doesn't mean Newbie Miracle don't stand a chance. I'm Mike Loris, going to be joined by Grandis for this best of three. Are you ready to do this, dude? Absolutely. We'll move into it. As you said, this is going to be an elimination match and will be followed immediately afterwards by Newbie Young versus Braveheart, also a match for elimination as we're currently in the lower bracket. We're going to start things off with Queen of Pain, Gyrocopter, Lich Shrek, and Tusk Band out, and a clockwork first pick for Energy Pacemaker. Nothing really surprising as far as the draft is concerned yet. EP, I mean, everyone in this tournament loves themselves some clockwork, but I think EP like it just a little bit more, uh, you know, first pick worthy. Uh, also worth noting that this is the first game where we're going to have a little bit of help, a little bit of support from uh, esportsgaming.com, so uh, they do think that this game is a little bit more even than I think. I'm just saying EP uh, should be a little more than 54%, but hey, um, yeah, I'll, they'll trust in them, but hey, if you want to make some value, that's where you'll, that's where you'll find it right now at the very least, but... Uh, yeah, big thanks to them for helping us uh, with a little bit of support, and they're going to get their hands into this tournament for, you know, a little bit. The tournament is winding down, but uh, yeah, we'll see what the picks are going to pan out from here on out. Shadowfiend, the first pick. What other potential powerful heroes are there? Well, I mean, there they are. They're all going to come out here in this first stage anyway. Yeah, it is going to be Earthshaker picked into a clockwork, so that might be a little bit concerning for Newbie Miracle, but just the power of having the Shadowfiend backed up by the Earthshaker in mid should make up for that. It's an opener that we've seen a lot, in all honesty, and it's going to be a pretty standard one, pretty even for both sides. So, the Shadow Fiend first pick for the Newbie Miracle side with the Earthshaker backup is a Ten pretty freaking dangerous remaining. lane. Like, Fissure, even if it doesn't wall off and two raises in the mid lane, Five is going to be remaining. in a bit of trouble. Yet, despite that, Energy Pace may go ready with the Clockwork. If they do grab Reserve Spirit Breaker time. and or Storm Spirit right now, they could absolutely crush the Shadow Fiend. Like, that is such a bad time for the SF in the mid game when he has to worry about so many heroes getting on top of him. It's going to be delayed, however. Rubik is going to be the pick first for EP. Uh, pretty good hero up against Shaker. Stealing that fissure is gold. Yeah, and it's also somewhat of a counter pick because Rubik is very good against Clockwork as well. In general, it's a good hero for Energy Pacemaker, although they still have a lot of cores to fill up later on in the draft, and they might be a little bit damaged light as the game scales later. It's not going to worry them too much. I think both teams will be happy with what they picked up in the first two picks. Five seconds remaining. All right, so we'll see this ban phase progress onwards. Me Miracle do take Dial out that ban. Storm Spirit. I would not be super surprised to see them ban out the Spirit Breaker, although I do think probably grabbing Radiant it for them a little bit, uh, that's a possibility, but uh, maybe they don't want to exactly have that up against a Clockwork and a Rubik. But still, having one of those heroes on your side makes the thing so much easier, and... Uh, the mid lane now for EP is going to be potentially a little bit more difficult. Uh, they can always shift gears remaining. and start going aggressive or uh, start going pushy with the Dragon Knight or something like that. Five but again, the remaining. Shadow Fiend Earthshaker kind of dual lane is going to be super, super dangerous for whoever does go in that mid lane. We got the supporting, uh, the really babysitting supporters being banned out from EP and both the Dazzle and Winter Wyvern, two heroes that are very well known for keeping their allies alive. For sure. As far as the next ban is concerned for Newbie Miracle, eh, it's going to be a Witch Doctor. Fair enough, Rubik Witch Doctor would have been a very potent supporting duo. Let's see what Newbie Miracle going to pick up for themselves. Something like Alina could work out nicely. Yeah, we could definitely see a potential pickup there, but it's going to be a Witch Doctor to be banned out, actually. Again, it would have been a little bit, uh, I think, better for Newbie Miracle to grab that one here. Seems like a perfectly reasonable pick. Uh, but, you know, banning it out, maybe grabbing that Spirit Break that I was talking about, it's a possibility for them. It is also worth noting that Undying is still Ten here, so remaining. if any team wants to start stepping up the heat, then that's the hero to grab. Yeah, there are a lot of different options for Newbie Miracle, and they're going to take their sweet time with this pick, going into the reserve time now. There's so many different options for them to go towards, it's hard to speculate what they'll actually settle on, although it's probably not going to surprise anybody, it's just going to be Alina. It Dial stuns. Team. We've been seeing a lot of Lina's. A lot of support Lina, actually. I don't know. I, I mean, occasionally we have Lina's get a little bit of extra farm, but not with a high amount of priority. So within these Chinese games, for the most part, it's been supporting Lina. With the friendly Earthshaker, that's just a lot of stuns, and they're going to be, well, pretty much already set with their CC. Newbie Miracle, as far as the future picks are concerned. Ten so they can afford to pick remaining. up some heroes that don't exactly have any crowd control. 
well, as far as what those heroes might be, I really have no clue. But um, maybe they'll just go ahead and pick up their mid laner or one core here. Um, yeah, it's a very open ended start for Energy Pacemakers draft with not a lot that's really showing. Follow up to the clockwork would be nice with a lot of damage, and usually the support that you'd pick up in that spot would either be the Lena or the Witch Doctor. So that's been denied away for them coming out from Newbie Miracle. Uh, EP do like Ember Spirit, I think, a lo little bit more than other teams. It's a possibility right now, as Fissure, LSA, yeah, it's tough to deal with, but those aren't exactly the correct type of stuns that you really want to have on your team if you're going to be going up against an Ember Spirit, because they simply come out a little bit slower than you would like. So maybe Energy Pacemaker are going to sit on that one and try to build around the Ember. I've seen them grab it many, many times, even in situations where you would say, oh, Ember Spirit, that's a terrible pick right now. Yeah, down to 50 seconds of reserve time. Energy Pacemaker take a lot of time for this pick, and it's going to be a Viper. Really? Very interesting. Although Earthshaker Shadow Fiend is a very potent lane, Viper is one of the few heroes that can theoretically survive against that Fissure into Double Raise combination if he is maxing out Corrosive Skin, and in general is just a stable hero for them to fall back on. Yeah, it's a little bit safer than uh, we're really used to seeing. Some of these Chinese games tend to just fire off like a rocket and things get off to a very fast start. But, you know, Viper is a safe hero, but at the same time, he does have that potential. If you try to dive him or something like that, he could very easily turn things around with a little bit of help. He could even just, you know, lay into the Shadow Fiend as long as he avoids the raises for the most part. Just having that constant poison attack as a harassment tool is, well, what wins Viper lanes, or at least what helps Viper to not lose lanes. Still, the rotation in from a potential Lina with an Earthshaker hanging around is very dangerous for any given mid lane. And Viper, even though he has corrosive skin, is no exception. So he may need a little bit of help, or he might need some good warding support from his uh, allied supports. Yeah, no matter what the case may be. As far as our next couple picks are concerned, if Newbie Miracle want to go ahead and snag their offlaner here, I think that would be a pretty good option. The Spear Pricker and the Undying are both available, and both of them would work pretty nicely. Other heroes to keep on the radar, Phantom Lancer could be a pretty potent safe laner. Viper really doesn't bother him much at all, and neither does the Clockwork Rubik, although it might be a little bit early for that. I'll pick it up now. Damn, dude, you're just like 100% on Newbie Miracle. What's their last pick? Tell us now. I have no idea now that I'm put on the spot. Um, yes, you do. I it's... believe in you. What is it? <laughs> we'll wait until after the ban. Okay. We'll wait until after fair the enough. Ban. Fair enough. Uh, I expect a correct prediction or else you're fired. <laughs> EP, though. Oh, no. EP. They have a really safe draft, and uh, it's a really slow draft. Ember Spirit looking pretty good here now that the Phantom Lancer has actually been picked up. You get some potential broken Ten value seconds, off remaining. of Battle Fury Cleave, and, uh, well, again, they do just in general like that Five hero. Seconds remaining. It seems like EPR are also looking for a support hero to join that Rubik. In that regard, things are Reserve fairly open-ended. Maybe grabbing someone like a Lion to try to get on top of this PL a little bit easier? Yeah. Sounds reasonable enough for me. Um, Energy Pacemaker, they're going to take a lot of time with this pick, and I think that might be a little too much time. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what they settle on. I think going for their support right now is the easiest way about it. I don't think they'll see Ember Spirit banned in the last stage. They'll just pick it up now, fair enough. Radiant oh no, that means I have to... I'm not, I'm not gonna make a prediction on Energy Pacemaker. I only made one prediction and that's right. I, I don't have to make another one, but if I, <laughs> if I did have to... Uh, Bounty Hunter is still involved in this game, and yeah, Bounty Hunter perhaps not that great versus Phantom Lancer, but uh, definitely up against these softer, more clunky heroes like Lena and Earthshaker can give Energy Pacemaker Five quite a bit of snowball remaining. action, and for Ember Spirit, you kind of do need kill acceleration if you're going to do well in a He's game. Getting time. free farm is nice, but uh, he typically would also like to get kills. Yeah, well, let's see what the last couple bands are concerned. Should just be another support for them. It's actually going to be a Shadow Shaman ban out by Newbie Miracle. Pretty interesting. And then Darkseer ban coming for Energy Pacemaker. I still think the Spirit Breaker would work nicely for Newbie Miracle, even though he'd suffer a little bit inside the lane. I think it's, in general, just a good hero to set up kills and makes that mid lane even more potent. All right, so Spirit Breaker or Grandis is never going to be seen again. So much drama in this last pick, dude. Oh, whoa. oh, it's a bat! Wow. Okay, I was completely wrong, but it's I okay. can't say that I complained. <laughs> no one like... saw that coming. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um. Oh. You know, there was once a time where Bat Rider was picked up. or like, ho hum, it's Bat Rider. No big deal there. Boom! I got it. So good. We're on the money today for the most part. But nowadays, Bat Rider 
never, ever freaking seen. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see a Bat Rider. As far as initiating is concerned, getting on top of an Ember Spirit, difficult but possible. Bat Rider has an okay lane versus Clockwork. It feels like forever since I've seen this hero, and that's because it has been. <laughs> yeah. His initiation isn't the fastest, but coming out from Fog might be able to catch up with the Ember Spirit. It's going to be such an interesting game. Now we get to see the bat again. He's still pretty good in getting jungle farm, getting his blink dagger up at a good timing. But that could be interrupted by the bounty hunter and rotations coming up from energy pacemaker. I really wasn't expecting the bat either, so it, it's going to be fun. Let's see. The bounty hunter coming up from energy pacemaker is a lot more standard. Let's go ahead and quickly introduce our teams on the dire side. It's going to be Old Chicken playing for energy pacemaker on the Viper going mid. And fans going to be on is Ember Spirit 5400 on the Rubik. Clockwork handled by Xiao Tu Lei and bounty hunter last but not least by Le. All right, so on the newbie side, we got Christina who's going to be farming it up as the Phantom Lancer. Lena's on uh, 621's on Lena. Cherry is going to be playing the Shadow Fiend. Origami is in the wrong patch, but he's going to be playing Batrider anyway. We got KKKK on the Earthshaker, and everyone's going to be running out, loading into probably just the purely expected lanes. Uh, so yeah, the uh, Batrider nerfs. First of all, you can see right now, his base damage is absolute crap right now, so it's not really great to actually last hit with. The uh, yeah the burst damage of Flame Break got a little bit changed now a kind of dot e skill Firefly with the sticky napalm across the board I think got nerfed so yeah he can still jungle as you said before but it may be a little bit more difficult since we already see Lei kind of on the roam in the enemy side of the map he already has two observers and we'll see if he actually wants to block any of these camps blocking versus Shadow Fiend is already really good when you can block out Shadow Fiend's camps and Bat Riders camps then things get even better. Okay. Even though he was nerfed across the board, even after those nerfs, Batrider was still pretty good. The issue is that all the other offlaners are just better, and since there were still a couple left in the, the pool, I think that's um, very interesting that he's actually picked up. But yeah, these camp blocks are going to slow down his farm quite a bit. Viper going to get the bounty rune up top, and Shedefine, the bounty rune in bottom. No big surprises there. Yeah, I guess the, the bright side here for Batrider last pick is that after you last pick a Batrider, there's a 0% chance that the enemies counter pick with a Vengeful Spirit. So your lasso is safe. Next level, guys. We got next level justifications here. <laughs> yeah, Batrider will get a decent block, but Rubik makes sure that the range creep is not in front. Ember Spirit gets a, the better half of that exchange anyway, even though he is up against a dual lane. This Batrider should have a reasonable time in the lane. He's not going to be able to trade very effectively against the Rubik, but he has boots, so it should keep him pretty safe. You know who's going to have a really bad time? This Shadow Fiend already. He's gone for Necro Mastery at level 1, and he has absolutely no souls. Now he has some rays, so he'll be able to get some, but we have Old Chicken actually going for level 1 poison attack, level 2 nether toxin. He's looking to put the screws to the shadow fiend and we can already see it's working. This position is something you see very often from a viper who's up against a melee hero or up against someone like low range like a TA. Very rarely do you see it working up against a shadow fiend since shadow fiend usually has a little bit of help but even old chicken right now going deep. There is a fissure to help bail out cherry but man old chicken is doing some serious work to this SF who only has one creek kill at the moment. And with the Earthshaker arriving, that's not even going to help that much. Yeah, this is pretty difficult. It'll secure him a couple of souls, and as soon as he starts stacking those up, it'll be a lot harder for Viper to play as aggressively, but it is a nice early start to this laying stage. Not the Earthshaker is here. The Shadow Fiend's somewhat caught back up. Yeah, he just needs a couple of souls to really get things rolling, and Old Chicken, knowing he's up against a potential Lena and Shaker combo, and just raises in and of itself. He has to go for some corrosive skin, at least one point for value, but we'll see how defensive he actually wants to go. We'll see if he actually wants to grab a bottle right now, because he's kind of burning through his regeneration at a fast pace. Cherry doesn't have a great regeneration uh, status right now either, but he does have bottle as a more viable item, just because, well, he uses a little bit more mana than a viper, typically. But regardless, we'll see how that progresses onwards. Up towards top, Batrider is, well, as expected, having a shitty time. He has zero experience, the camp in his own jungle are completely blocked and the sentry dward attempt it's well it's gonna see potentially a sentry but it's not actually gonna do anything old chicken gets into a fight now cherry haste strewn from shadow fiend not really helping out too much as old chicken does get the kill barely 20 hp earthshaker looking for a long range fissure perhaps but old chicken as long as he backs off and he will he'll be just fine viper claims first blood 
Such a close exchange from both of those mid laners. Viper barely eking out ahead. That's going to help out Energy Pace Maker so much. All of that momentum that Shadow Fiend sort of got in lane, it's not completely gone. He's going to have to work to pick up those souls again. Viper's not losing that much time in lane compared to the SF. Although the Batrider's been having a bad time, I wouldn't have expected him to have this up. bad of a time. He's level one. He only gets one creep's worth of experience, and even that's split. Compared to the Clockwork, it's night and day. Clock is sitting on level four. I think the Batrider... I, I don't want to be mean, but I think he's just playing his lane poorly. And the clockwork is, I mean, not to like oversell it or anything, but uh, this lane is actually pretty deadly, but he's doing really, really well right now. Like, with level four and a half, three minutes in for an off laner, hell, for any hero, like, he's pretty much neck and neck with his own Viper. That's an amazing amount of value being gained by Shao Chulei right now, and this isn't the easiest lane either. We have a Fissure into an LSA, so maybe now clockwork is going to fall. It seems like I spoke a little bit too early, perhaps. Shao Chulei to die, but still... He, the fact that he has 16 CS, more CS than the enemy Phantom Lancer, means that this Clockwork, even though he has just died, is winning his lane. And that death isn't really going to stop him from winning his lane, since he will ideally get uh, that experience train once again flowing. And once he grabs level 6, then killing off Shaker and or Lina is a cakewalk for someone like a Clockwork. We do have also the Shadow Fiend getting the screws put to him once again. He has no bottle. He did die right before he actually had enough gold for it. That's... Well, I didn't realize that was a fact, but still, the first blood for Old Chicken, providing double value, but how? Now he's going to be in a little trouble. Fissure to block, and there's a whole bunch of heroes, suddenly a million heroes. Old Chicken has nowhere to run. He's going to try to turn around and kill off Cherry with the help of this bounty hunter. He will fall short, and Cherry will survive. Double kill for Cherry, and Newbie Miracle rotate in absolutely everyone, but it's worth it. Yeah, it helps out so much. I was... Tempted to say that that smoke got spotted. The Phantom Lancer also got tagged inside the smoke and kind of appeared out of nowhere into the lane, but I'm not sure if they saw the particles. If that was daytime when they went for it, maybe it's a little bit more likely, but it works out wonderfully in the end, and that's going to make sure that Cherry's sitting on a much more comfortable position, but right now, uh, he might get spotted. This ward has eyes under the Shadow Fiend, but he'll be able to bottle up now. And that will mean that he survives for a little while longer, but he's inside a corner. Lift up from the Rubik will pull him back in. He'll try to throw some raises and damage into 5400, but the Rubik will not die and Viper will secure the kill in return. Even after that gank onto mid lane, Shadow Fiend's still doing pretty poorly. Bottom lane, they're going to try to go for the Clockwork. Fissure going to be held for right now as Shao Chulei is getting into a position where there is... A very unlikely chance of escape, especially if Hookshot misses. However, battery assault... Okay, with Lina coming in, he's just dead right now. So, uh, with the Fissure there, it's going to be interrupted first, but Shaker will get the kill in the end with the said Fissure. But over towards mid, Batrider has wandered into Viper territory. That's not where you want to be. Viper's level 6, yet he didn't even need that Viper Strike. This Batrider is going to continue to do nothing, especially since this Observer Ward is still blocking out this hard camp of creeps. But, man, Old Chicken gone for a very aggressive build on the Viper considering uh, his opponents, yet it's working out for him. This is a Glass Cannon E build for Viper, yet still, he's sitting on level 6, he's 3-1-0, and oh, and now whoever comes to his lane, pretty much without exception, is going to be in a lot of trouble. They may even just die, but speaking of just die, we got Lay on the run right now. He's going to get fissured, Elsa already missed, but he's dusted up. One more right-click from Lina will grab the kill on the bounty. Here comes the clockwork, however. Battery Assault procced 18 seconds away from his hook shot, however, so that's a little bit ambitious. And now Shao Chule is actually kind of surrounded. Luckily for him, there's no mana on the Shaker on, for a Fissure. That would have been his death for sure if there was mana. While all this is going on, Fawn is having the time of his life. He's PvE... No heroes in his lane. This is dream scenario for any carry. Yeah, and this is the big difference between the pressure that the offlaners were able to apply. Clockworks put a lot of pressure onto the Phantom Lancer, even though he has died twice. Christina is not farming nearly as fast as the Ember Spirit. It, less than seven minutes in the game, 16 CS. The difference between them is pretty big. Hookshot bottom catches out the supports. They'll be able to blow up 621. It seems. Yeah, a little bit more damage with the flare. They'll find it. Christina's gonna start making some illusions. Shao Tule doesn't get enough damage through with the battery assault, but will he go down here? It looks like the answer is no. He's pretty tanky. He has a salve, and he will survive. That's the first hook shot that actually nets them a kill. Over towards mid, old chicken. He's gonna go aggressive onto Cherry, even after getting fissured. Raises are there, however, he does have a full magic wand. Batrider on his tail, but this is a level 3 Batrider with Firefly not connecting. KKK does not have enough mana for another Fissure. Old Chicken can turn this around right now because he's Viper. And he can do some ridiculous things, although 4 stacks of Napalm, it's still not quite slowing him enough. It's actually filling up his Magic Wand. And now here comes Fawn, burning down the Batrider. That's one kill, and KKK just wants to get this kill, but he can't. Old Chicken survives at 50 HP. The downside of Batrider up against a Magic Wand is always there, guys. And Viper got 
he was never really in that much trouble, honestly. Like, that was a really ambitious dive from a level 3 Batrider and a level 5 Shaker. Vaughn collects as he does arrive. That's going to give him his almost completed drums. He's going to have quite a lot of gold this game. And up in top lane, they're not losing any space either. 5400 is going to be farming there as Rupert gets closer and closer towards his spell steal. He's not going to get any items after that, but... It's still pretty nice. We're on bottom lane to look for a light strike ray on to lay. Even though the light strike ray misses, doesn't matter. Spotted out by this ob sentry combo. Nina's getting quite a bit of experience right now. It's like not perhaps you know as impressive since she's not you know sitting in lane like 5400, but still, uh, she is on her way to Laguna Blade, and that shit hurts. So fun. He's gonna find Origami, who just wants to farm up to the high ground. The Batrider is gonna go chains. Not even being casted there from fun. Kind of surprising, but they do catch KKK in the trees with the hookshot and the cogs. Now it's actually no hookshot. It was just pastry, which is, I guess, kind of hookshot E. They're going to catch Cherry as well. Sitting in the mid lane, he's going to be completely surrounded. Bounty Hunter arrives to get a little bit of experience. That's a quick two kill for Energy Pacemaker. They have no mech, so pushing down this tower, I mean, it's slow and steady, perhaps, but they're going to start dominating the enemy jungle right now. They have a deep observer ward that is going to be spotting out the Bat Rider, so. Though Batrider Radiant's will, in theory, be able to recover attack. with this stack. I don't know if it's actually going to happen since Bounty Hunter is approaching that level 6 mighty quick. Plus, Shachulay is still hanging around. Attack. Yeah, and they have a ward behind the tower. I'm not sure how much vision that's going Radiant's to give them. Looks like the line cutoff is attack. here, but Batrider is going to walk uphill into the clockwork. And they might just go for it. There is an Earthshaker to back him up, so it's not the cleanest of kills, but they have a remnant for it, and they'll be able to find themselves. KKKK, and the Earthshakers just run down. Battery Assault, nothing he can do. Turn around for Raze. Two Raises will connect, but the Batrider's still not sitting on level 6. In fact, he's level 3. Can't chase that clockwork. Viper's behind the tower. It's a double kill for Old Chicken. They'll lose their Shadow Fiend again. The Dark Courier in a little bit of trouble, but nobody's there to secure that kill. My goodness, this is the saddest time I've seen a Batrider have. Ever, I want to say. Fan is getting pursued. Oh, the Viper Strike up to Christina, and oh, they'll just be able to kill off this PL again. There's just nothing that they can do to stop this aggressive dive coming out from Energy Pacemaker. Even though they brought in heroes, it's been one by one. TP in the tower coming out from the Earth Shaker. Look at the Light Strike Ray Dragon Slave combination over onto the Bounty Hunter. He'll get dusted up and will die over in the sideline. But in trade, they lose the Lena, and that was tracked. That was the first track kill of the game, but old chicken, he's still in the area. Slept full HP with Shout You Like coming in. They're gonna want to go for Shaker, but with seeing a Shadow Fiend, they'll maybe reconsider. But no, Ember Spirit's back. He teleported back to the base, but jumped back to his remnant. Vision's gonna connect onto two, yet Fawn's shield is still ticking away. Shaker is going to fall to something here. That stick not gonna help him as Fawn does stab the Shaker to death. EP gets so much blood on their hands. My god, that was a tier 2 dive. Quick reminder, guys, there's a tier 1 tower alive. EP just don't give a damn right now, and Viper, he never really took any focus fire, so he's just constantly firing, getting value at Nether Toxin, getting value out of his poison attack, even hell, getting value out of like such a simple item like Power Treads, which did work over the past couple of fights. Christina arrived into something that he should not have arrived in, and was even killed off in the midst of things. Newbie Miracle bleed out so many heroes. And we can just see the steep dive that that took in the net worth. It's going deep into EP's favor, t almost at 7,500 in gold and experience. And it's 11 minutes. 11 minutes and there's that much advantage. Plus, for Newbie Miracle, they don't really have any great way of coming back, especially if they get picked off again. Here comes Ember Spirit, straight into the Earthshaker. Fissure, going to be thrown, going to connect onto three. Really nice Fissure there, 5400, in a little bit of trouble as he's swarmed by Illusions. Does get the lift up, stick up as well, and Christina's going to fall short as Fawn is going to jam it home into the Earthshaker with the help of Bounty Hunter. They're now going to get onto Christina with the track. 5400 steals, Doppelganger will escape as Fawn grabs another one, this time solo on the Bat Rider. Lena's going to arrive, has a cannon, but... There's really no good target here. Radiant I can't believe Rubik actually cut out of that, man, but it's just like insult to injury as they do now also steal the Batrider's stack. This is so mean. It really is. Batrider is level 3. It's almost 12 minutes into the game. I haven't seen a Batrider have this bad a time, much less any offlaner. Even Phoenix tends to have a better time. I, I, I really just don't know what to say. There was so much value in the last couple fights gotten from the Ember Spirit's remnants, he was able to back off, join the fights, come back in, and it's really just a very bad situation to be if you're a newbie miracle. The first order of business is get Blink Dagger up for this Bat Rider. He's about halfway there. Once you have Blink Lasso, maybe you can set up some kills, but without it, you have a Shadow Fiend that just has PT's Aquila, or not even Aquila, just Wraith Band Bottle. Phantom Lancer doesn't have anything to contribute, although he's working towards his Diffusal Blade. They just don't have the items that are necessary to fight. Mid, old chicken, he's gonna get Fissure, but it's not gonna connect properly. Batrider in the meantime gets picked off by Ember Spirits, uh, with a little bit of help. I assume there was a track involved there, uh, 
I'll kill recap. Where is it? Uh, no track, Radiance actually, it seems. So just a kill, which is attack. fine. Uh, this is very easy to say, I think, in our position. That's like, oh, Batrider, such a bad hero. Why are you picking up? It's doing terribly. But really, there's not many offline heroes that could be doing that much better here. Uh, as far as heroes that are still in the pool, they're going to find Lena, who's in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, a million heroes from EP, and Lena's completely surrounded. Five heroes, in fact, from EP will be destroyed. Uh, yeah, Batrider, like, he even is a pretty decent hero to have because, in theory, with stacks, you'll be able to recover, get back into this game, and look for a Blink Dagger and try to start some fights for Newbie Miracle. But that's not going to happen ever. You just said that, like, there's very rarely a situation where offlaners have such a bad time. It's 13 minutes in. There's very rarely a situation where any hero has this bad a time, and only a certain amount can be chalked up to Batrider. Cherry, oh, he's going to dodge a hook shot, but he's still in a little bit of trouble. Shout Chile does catch him 1v1 in the cogs. And Shadow Fiend, he can't really escape this. He has a bottle, but even with drinking it, Clockwork's gonna grab the free kill. And meanwhile, Christina is stuck. Like, I don't know what happened there, but uh, <laughs> seems like Doppelganger failed. So, uh, EP, they're getting absolutely everything in this game. They're getting the towers, they're getting the last hits, they're getting the kills, they're getting the track. I, I don't even know what Newbie Miracle could do at this point. They have to just try to get some nice burst damage on someone, I think. Yeah. A lot of it comes down to how much control Energy Pacemaker have had over this map throughout the entire game. Right now, even their words inside the enemy would still stand, despite having so many sentries committed to try and deny these away from them. They've spotted out the uh, enemy woods this entire game. They've taken away Batrider's stacks. They've scouted out his stacks whenever he tries to make them, and it's not really Batrider's fault. Up in top lane, Xiao Tule may be in a little bit of trouble. The Earthshaker and Lena are coming from behind, but Clockwork's a little too fast, it seems. They'll have another Spirit Lance, but now Ember Spirit's coming into the back lines. He's going to Remnant Ford, catching out 6 one who was tracked up. She'll drop the Laguna Blade, but Phantom Swords most of that damage with the Flame Guard, although without his Flame Guard now, might not be able to chase forward for any more kills. Cogs will bounce back the Phantom Lancer, and the Earthshaker also in a lot of trouble. Remnant Ford, Christina is going to be chased down to the ground with a Shuriken bouncing towards the Earthshaker. They'll kill off the Phantom Lancer and drop the Earthshaker to about half. Stolen Fisher will jam at home. That's three track kills for Energy Pacemaker. And Newbie Miracle trying to be EP as they do confidently dive a tier one. Clockwork was super, super patient there, man. Like, I expected him to just, you know, as soon as the Lance is connecting, as soon as he's on the run, you know, pop cogs, Radiance hope for the best at that point. But no, he just calmly walked all the way into a choke point where once the cogs are deployed, you actually cannot chase him anymore. If you doppelgang in, you are conceding your life away, and well, he was dead anyway, so that didn't really work out for him. In the meantime, Old Chicken was putting a lot of hurt onto a mid-tier 2. It is going to be denied, so for Newbie Miracle, you know, it's, it's kind of nice that that happens. But still, this Viper has mech, he's got drums, and 1,500 gold in the bank. Ember Spirit has 4,000 gold. This is not something you want to do as Ember Spirit, but shit, you're so far ahead. You're 708. You can do whatever you want at this point, plus Bounty Hunter. He's been getting so much in the way of track, he has a Blink Dagger, which is, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily the best item to have in this game, but it's there. Top tower this game is not looking good for Newbie Miracle, man. They're up against a whole lot of big heroes, Radiance and they could even scale decently fallen. well into the late game. Ember Spirit's gonna straight buy a Battle Fury, because that seems fair. Yeah, I was half tempted to say that he might go for a Desolator or something else, but... Uh, Battle Fury is just such a good item on it, it's hard to pass up. Good for fighting, good for farming, and in general, good. They are running double drums on the side of Energy Pacemaker, but I think that kind of matches the game plan and how this game is going for them. Personally, I might have rather seen a Yasha on the Viper, but I, I don't think it changes the state of the game at all. There's going to be a lot of vision on the high ground coming out from the Radiant side and the Dire side over here, so they know that the clockwork is stand or where the clockwork is standing, so maybe that'll make them a little bit safe, but they're all spotted out by track just as easily. So Energy Pacemaker, this is a very straightforward game for them. The good news is that you're getting very close to the Blink Dagger for the Bat Rider. Maybe, just maybe Miracle can get a couple of key pickoffs when they're defending high ground. It's so difficult to actually do that, though. Like, even though, yeah, Blink Dagger on Bat is super nice, the Rubik has stolen Fissure, and Fissure's actually only level 2 at this point because Earthshaker's only level 6. So, yeah, Rubik's kind of, like, disappointed to have Fissure, and that's not something you'll ever really hear anyone say, but still, he has that instant Fissure cast. He has a Telekinesis, which also comes out super quickly. A Blink in the Lasso, as nice as it is, won't really have any 4-staff backup for a very long portion of this game. So Radiant's the chances of him blinking in, lassoing fallen. someone, and then getting lifted up and demolished is very high at this point. They're going to try, because, I mean, you have to try at this point, but EP, it's 17 minutes in, and there's only one Tier 1 tower standing. They don't have any 
real what I would call pushing heroes, yet just with the amount of action they've had and the amount of farm they're getting and the lack of response from new miracles, gonna be most of these towers conceded for free. Shao Chulai also looking for Cherry perhaps. He has a pretty good angle, but again, he's spotted by this Observer Ward. But this is kind of a bad thing for newbie miracle like maybe if this observer ward wasn't here they'd be playing a little bit more aggressively maybe they could like kind of bait ep into a dive they get the lasso onto old chicken but he's not going anywhere anytime soon that blink lasso is kind of uninspiring they're now gonna hook shot in onto kkk who's forced to deploy the echo slam but actually absorbs that one very easily even absorbs the laguna blade he will go down to the end fawn is just doing work in the back lines He's gonna take two kills by himself now onto Cherry. They're gonna go. Slight fist gonna grab Fawn. A double kill. Now checking for Origami. Tracked. Well, it's gonna be Old Chicken to grab it with something. Maybe that was even the passive skin, but it's four kills very easily being picked up by EP, and that's a GG call 18 minutes in. And I don't blame them. That was such a dominating performance from Energy Pace Banker throughout the entire game. About five minutes in, it looked like things were pretty even, but as soon as they start getting any sort of momentum, that fight behind the tier 2 tower is still very early on, where Ember Spirit remnants back in twice, was really the big turning point for Energy Pacemaker. Game number two, something needs to change. I'm not sure what it's going to be for Newbie Miracle, but I don't think they can go for the standard drafting, and uh, definitely don't go for Batrider. Yeah, Batrider didn't exactly do them any favors, but again, there's uh, not a ton that they could Oops, sorry guys, I just completely botched that one. There's not a ton that they could actually, uh, again, have done with any other given hero. So, yeah, Energy Pacemaker just make Newbie take a giant bite of the curb. And they are the favorites to win EP. I did not see their games versus Tongfu, so I don't know how one-sided that was. But again, I think EP Tongfu is going to be the finals, I'm calling it right now. But guys, this is game one, the best of three. 18 minutes for game one, and uh, it's not looking that great for Newbie Miracle. They're facing elimination, so hopefully they can bring it back. I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by Grandis V, and we'll both be right back for game two. Don't go anywhere, guys.